Hey, what's up guys? Jonathan Gray, AKA Johnny Paranormal. Today I wanna to share with you guys an unusual phenomena that I keep bumping into over and over again. And that is the phenomena known as sphere drones. And it is exactly what it sounds like. They're spherical metallic objects that are found floating around in the sky or in the woods, mainly around marshy wetland areas. And I have encountered these objects myself personally on more than one occasion. So in the following video, I will be sharing my personal experience with these particular objects. Each time I experience these objects, I'm hiking in the woods or I'm compelled to go to a wooded area and that is when I see them. So I wanted to know if you guys have had any kind of experiences like this. Leave some details down below, please. I know there are a ton of hoax videos, CGI videos out there. I don't have any videos, unfortunately, of the actual objects themselves. I do, however, have a picture and I will be sharing it with you guys in this video. So without further ado, here is my story. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, I came in here just kind of doing a little bit of nature hiking, you know, walking through the woods. And uh, they put trails in here now, like, like legit trails. But back then, this was just basically woods. And so I was walking along, and this was, you know not a super heavily traveled area there would be some hikers some people go in here to rock climb but then i went in here one day there was nobody else around i was completely alone um there was you know it was the seasons were changing it was kind of like this a little bit and um out in the swampy area that's where we're going there was one of those metallic orbs floating over the swamp area and it went bloop into the swamp and then I didn't see it anymore. Now, mind you, I used to live in that direction over there and I would see these balls of light flying in the sky and it was, no it was normal because I would see airplanes all the time, so I wasn't totally freaked out because the Lawrence Airport is right over there. So I'd see planes go back and forth over this area all the time. Once in a while I would see the, the a ball of light at night drop down into the Den Rock Park area over here. Now this cliff right here looks down on the swamp. You can see we're at like a little plateau. So let's go check it out. See if we can see anything. You can see the body of water down there through the trees, right in uh, this area here. We're pretty high up. And it's just a big drop from there. Yeah, in order for us to get down there, I think it's this side of the little rocky area could bring us down. You just have to go down very careful. So here we are, guys. Now, you can see that there's a lot of stuff that's grown in. We see that little beaver dam way out here. Little beaver dam right there. Just about... I don't know, like 20, 30 feet closer into that little mouth area right there is where I saw this little metallic thing float from about that tree right there to right about the middle of that area there and it plopped down into the water. It was probably about the size of a basketball.
it's been, like I said, almost 20 years since I've been here. And it's really weird being here. This is the sky just over the water over there is Andover, Massachusetts. And right over there is North Andover, Massachusetts. And over there is Lawrence, Massachusetts. So we got all the uh, surrounding towns. This is like right in the middle of everything right here where that water is, where that body of water is. Now, imagine that you're just walking through the woods and all of a sudden you see this thing floating probably about six to eight inches above the water. And then you see it just move about 20, 30 feet and then plop right down into the water. It was amazing to see. Anti-gravity, totally silent, had a metallic veneer. The sun was shining and you could see the sun shining right off of it. Like it was just, you know, a car driving down the street on a sunny day. I was just totally baffled of what it was. I didn't tell anybody because, you know, who do you say, hey, you know, Guys, I saw this sphere floating in the woods. No. Now, if I told them I saw some ducks, they would be like, oh, cool, ducks, yeah, no big deal. You tell me to see a sphere in the woods, then they think you're crazy. So, we didn't go into have that conversation at all. It was in the early 2000s when I was hiking at a place called Denrock Park in Lawrence, Massachusetts. I had stopped for a short break, and while taking in the scenery, I noticed something unusual. As I gazed over the marshlands, I saw what I thought was a can reflecting the sun out of the corner of my eye. As I homed in on the source of the reflection, I was shocked to see a perfectly round sphere hovering motionlessly several inches above the marshlands. I stood there for several seconds trying to figure out what I was seeing. I tried to rationalize. Was this a mylar balloon? Then, without warning, the sphere seamlessly moved from one point of the marsh to another. I say seamlessly because the object didn't wobble or bobble. It moved perfectly, almost as if it was on a track, and it stopped just as precise when it reached its new destination. Within about five seconds of stopping, the sphere jerked straight down, submerging itself in the murky waters of the marsh, almost as if it was aware of my presence. It coincidentally seemed like it was trying to evade observation. I had an eerie feeling that as I observed the presence of this sphere, the sphere was also observing me. I never saw anything like that before, and I never thought that I'd see anything like that again until several years later in 2007. I was driving through the back roads of Middleton, Massachusetts, and I saw a nice sunset. Not anything spectacular, but enough to take notice and appreciation. All of a sudden I felt unusually compelled to pull over to the side of the road and enjoy the sight. So I pulled the car off to the side of the road and into an embankment and parked. I got out and started snapping photos of the sunset. All of a sudden I felt compelled to take a short walk in the wooded area, yet again by another marshland. I snapped a few more photos and then realized it was getting kind of dark fast. So I made my way out of the woods and back to my vehicle. It wasn't until a few days later that I noticed something unusual in one of the photos that I had taken. Way up in the sky, directly above the marshland, was a shiny metallic sphere, just hovering there perfectly in the center of my photo, as if it was the center of my attention and I purposely took a picture of it. Ironically, the only reason I even noticed that it was there was I was showing a friend how great the photo quality was on my new camera. I tried zooming in to show how little degrade there was in the picture quality when you enhance the photo, but to my surprise, at first, I thought I was seeing a blemish in the photo, but upon closer inspection, I noticed that it was a perfectly round metallic sphere hovering in the sky, just like the one I encountered in Denrock Park several years earlier. I never knew just how common the sphere phenomena were until I started researching it myself. I searched the internet and found several references to alien spheres. One account that stood out to me as valid was the Betts family sphere. The reason I decided to share this one with you guys is that there's a lot of scientific research put into this one, and it got a lot of media attention. So I'm going to give you the short version of the story, and I'll leave a link down in the description so you guys can read the full article. There's a ton of videos on YouTube about this topic anyway, so I'm just going to keep it brief. On May 26, 1974, Terry Matthew Betts, a 21-year-old pre-med student, along with his mother Jerry and his father Antoine, who was a marine engineer. So I'd say these people are of above average intelligence. So anyways, the family was inspecting the damage caused by a brush fire on their 88-acre property. 
They didn't notice anything unusual at first, but upon concluding their assessment of the damage, they came across a highly polished 8-inch metallic sphere weighing in at about 22 pounds. The family took the sphere home and placed it in their living room, thinking nothing of it other than it was an unusual find. Maybe a cannonball or a piece of a satellite. It was weird. They noticed only one marking on the object, that of an elongated triangle stamped on the surface of the sphere. One day, Terry was playing guitar in the living room when the sphere started making humming and pulsing sounds. Each time Terry played, the sphere would react almost as if it was responding to the notes he played. Days later, the family dog started acting unusual around the sphere, crying and covering its ears due to the odd vibrations the sphere was emitting. Later on, the family would go on to describe poltergeist-type activity going on in their homes, such as doors slamming at all hours of the night and what sounded like organ music playing, even though there was no organ in the home. The family would come to notice that the sphere would become more active on sunny days and less active on overcast days, possibly indicating that the sphere itself was solar-powered in some form. The sphere would move in opposing directions when force was used upon it. The sphere would also identify when it was in danger, almost as if it had some kind of internal guidance system. It would go up slanted tables to avoid falling off the edge, propelled by some kind of internal mechanism. The sphere was later x-rayed by scientists that discovered that two smaller spheres were inside of the larger sphere. The sphere itself was also made of stainless steel material that could withstand up to 120,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. Scientists never discovered who or what manufactured the sphere, and they still don't know till this very day. Dr. Harder, the scientist that studied the sphere, found that the two internal spheres are made of elements far heavier than anything known to science. He also hypothesized that if one were to drill a hole in the sphere, the sphere could go critical and explode like a bomb. If this is some kind of alien drone, then a self-destruct mechanism could be possible. Dr. Harder went on to explain, because of this danger and because the object could still presumably be under surveillance by its alien makers, he warned any future investigators against making any attempts to breach the hull of the Betts Sphere. So guys, I personally feel that the Betts Sphere could actually be some type of alien drone device. And taking into account my own personal experiences with the spheres, I would go ahead and say, yeah, I would not go ahead and drill into that device at all. Because there very well may be some kind of fail-safe self-destruct mechanism on board the device. It's quite possible that this device was sent here to observe the planet and its inhabitants, or to complete some other tasks that we won't quite understand until a future point in time. I also wanted to go out on record and say that I also feel that it might have been been responsible for the fire on the Betts property to begin with. The description of the object given by the Betts family and the documentation of the scientists leads me to believe that the actual sphere itself may have been malfunctioning, as the spheres that I have encountered were pretty good at evading detection, and they would not allow one to simply just go up to it and pick it up and take it home with them. So I wonder if in fact the sphere itself was damaged in some form. So next time you're in the woods and you're by some marshland just be extra observant and take a deeper look at your surroundings uh, look at the treetops look inside the trees look in the bushes you may very well come across one of these things just hanging out in the woods if you can catch one go for it just don't drill any holes in it i know that i'm going to be paying extra close attention to my surroundings the next time i'm in the woods because i would love to actually purposefully get another picture of one of these and it would be amazing to actually capture one but i doubt that's going to happen anytime soon so until that day comes keep an eye on the skies keep an eye on the ground always be aware of your surroundings and remember no matter how normal and boring your day has been somewhere out there strange things are happening